Glock 20, Mountain Thunder. Here you can see on the table we have a mountain still life of the equipment and gear I like to bring out with me when I'm hiking up in the Georgia foothills in North Georgia on the Appalachian Trail. The knife here is an Ontario Rat 7. Our headlamp is a H1 Nova by Olight, great headlamp. It's never let me down out in the field. It's very powerful too. Runs off of a single CR123A battery. And beneath our Glock 20 here is my Hill People kit bag, which is what I use to carry the Glock 20 instead of a hip holster or belt holster because it doesn't interfere with my backpack. So if you're watching this video, chances are you've already made the decision that you want to carry when you're out on your wilderness adventure, whatever that is, whether you're actually hiking and fishing in Alaska where there are grizzly bears or you're doing, like me, an overnight hike on some section of the Appalachian Trail or the Pacific Crest Trail. Maybe you're out hiking with your family on a day hike. Maybe you're even doing car camping in an area where there could be bears, there could be large dangerous animals, and you want a firearm in a caliber that is going to be able to meet those possibilities and keep you and the people you're with safe. If you do decide to carry outdoors, the Glock 20 is a great option that has a lot of capabilities and should really be high on your list, if not number one, of options you could consider for a backpacking firearm. The Glock 20 is not the only firearm that I have carried out into the wilderness on the Appalachian Trail in North Georgia. In fact, I've carried firearms like a small Taurus TCP pocket pistol. I've also carried this Glock 26 in 9mm out on the trail. And both the Glock 26 and the Taurus TCP are much smaller, lighter weight options. Uh, particularly the Taurus, the TCP is going to come in loaded at around 14 ounces. We'll consult our scale here to check the weight of these firearms. And you can see that loaded, the Glock 26 is coming in at 26 ounces. 26 and 26 and the Glock 20 is probably going to be significantly heavier. Yeah, you can see 40 ounces. Wow. So let's talk a little bit more about that 40 ounces of weight. For many hikers, ultralight hikers, through hikers, the weight of even carrying a small handgun like the Taurus uh, at 12 or 14 ounces is going to be too much. And there are many people who don't think you need to carry a handgun when you're hiking. So I'm not going to make the argument that A, you do always need to carry a handgun because I've been on several overnight hikes where I haven't carried. And I think that if you're the type of person who isn't a concealed carry permit holder and you're not a gun person, you don't carry in your everyday setting, then I really don't think you need to go out of your way to get the means and the equipment to carry when you're just going out on the trail because if we're to look at the hard facts about dangers, being attacked by an animal or even some deranged person on the trail isn't the most likely source of danger on the trail. Now that said, if you are the type of person who is a concealed carry permit holder uh, you are a Second Amendment advocate, firearm enthusiast, and you want to carry on the trail, and you are an enthusiast in the sense that you want to have one of the best tools for the job of a backpacking handgun, then I can't recommend the Glock 20 highly enough for that role. And if your mentality is that of a through hiker or that of an ultralight hiker in the sense that you want to limit your weight as much as possible, then the price of admission of this is going to be too much. And there's no way to really argue around that. Uh, I will say that through hikers and ultralight hikers, maybe 
get a lot of press, and particularly with through hikers, there's a mystique associated with that activity. And I'm not a through hiker. I'm not an ultralight hiker. I think that they're all awesome, and this isn't bashing on them, but I think particularly with through hiking, people get this idea that when they're going out on a one night backpacking trip that they need to emulate a through hiker or a hardcore ultralight hiker. And I just really don't think that that's the case. You should do what you like to do. You should take out equipment that gives you the capabilities that you like. And I'm a firearm enthusiast, so I carry out a firearm that I really like on the trail. I carry out a large fixed blade that I really like. And it's really about what do you enjoy doing, not so much about imposing this sense that you have to emulate a through hiker or you have to emulate an ultralight hiker. And unless you are taking out the lightest weight equipment and not carrying that you're somehow dumb or you're not as advanced at backpacking. So I definitely don't subscribe to any of that. And I would definitely encourage you to sort of not look at the through hiker, ultralight hiker mentality as the box that you have to live in as a backpacker. So at 40 ounces, we are talking the weight of a full frame steel revolver in a large caliber like 357 Magnum or even 44 Magnum. So if you opt to carry the Glock 20, what advantages are you getting over those? Well, the first advantage that you're getting is capacity. You're getting 15 rounds of 10 millimeter, a round that is going to perform on par with the 357 Magnum out of a handgun. So if you're carrying a small frame revolver in 357 Magnum or 44 Magnum or even a medium or large revolver in those calibers, you are going to have significantly fewer rounds in order to deal with whatever threat you need your firearm to deal with. So even if you were to carry something like a Ruger GP100 or even a Ruger Alaskan and you were to carry two speed loaders with you, you'd still only have the capacity that this firearm does with one magazine in it. The reason that I wasn't as enthusiastic about the Taurus TCP is that while it's a small firearm, it's really easy to carry. You can just carry it in a pocket. You don't even need something like the Hill People kit bag here, a chest mounted carry solution. With the Taurus TCP, you put it in your pocket and you forget it. But the 38 or 380 ACP is not going to do the same kind of job that a 10 millimeter is. Uh, the Taurus TCP also didn't stand up to the elements as well. The coating on the slide I found was prone to rust, but that said, it was a great firearm. I have since sold the Taurus TCP, but it wasn't because I didn't enjoy shooting it. It has a great trigger. It's very accurate. It's not painful or unpleasant to shoot. I never had any reliability issues with it. It just didn't really excite me the way that the Glock 20 does as a backpacking mountain carry firearm. I would say that some of the limitations of the Taurus TCP are also reasons I don't carry out the Glock 26 into the mountains. And the Glock 26 has great capacity at 10 plus one rounds. I have this particular Glock 26 is my EDC, it's equipped with night sights. The Glock 20 is also running night sights, and I don't think that you need night sights on every firearm, but if you're going to want to rely on something in a stressful situation at night, in the dark, you're in a tent, uh, something's rustling around outside, having the ability to see your sights and acquire those and get a good sight picture in the dark is really crucial and you of course would want to illuminate or have some kind of positive identification of what you were shooting at of course. But with the Glock 26 in 9mm it's great 
as a personal defense EDC weapon, as a everyday concealed carry permit holder's firearm of choice. And that is the role in which I use this. And again, I just like the 10 millimeter a lot more in the mountains for the kind of role that I imagine the Glock 20 fitting in than I do the 9 millimeter Glock. With both the Glock 26 and the Glock 20, the elements are really not a concern. These are Glock reliable, they have advanced finishes on them, they are for all intents and purposes weatherproof. So you're not going to have to worry as I did with the Taurus about getting this thing rained on or it getting in some water. It is going to do very well in a foggy, moist kind of mountain environment. So while I did carry the Taurus TCP and the Glock 26, I was never entirely satisfied with those options. You can see here the 9mm versus the 10mm just in terms of their size. You can see here the significant disparity between these two. And if we're talking about 9mm, if we're talking about 40 Smith & Wesson or even 45 ACP, those are all, as of today, very close in performance when we're talking about the most advanced loadings, the law enforcement loadings, even the civilian loadings that you can get in each of those calibers. They're more alike than they are different, especially when we step up to something like the 10 millimeter. And here I'm using some Underwood ammunition, 200 grain hard cast flat nose. So you probably don't want to shoot box after box of these out of a standard Glock polygonal barrel because it's not recommended that you do that. But as long as you don't go wild with it, I'm sure you'll be fine and I've never seen any reports of problems with that. But with a round like this 200 grain flat nose by Underwood, you are going to get significant penetration of bone and tissue in a large animal like a black bear or a grizzly bear. So I would feel very confident in a round like this taking it and needing it to perform in a moment like that that it would do the job that it's designed to do. People often wonder, okay, what's the recoil like with the 10 millimeter? You know, is this thing pleasant to shoot? And I, I would say even with the most powerful loading that I could get from Underwood Ammo, this thing is a lot of fun to shoot. It's not uncomfortable at all. I could shoot it all day. Uh, it's definitely stout and you know that you're firing a very powerful firearm and there's a little bit more snap to it than something like a 45, but it's not that much different from a 45 in my experience. Uh, people who have shot a bunch of different calibers might be able to make a more precise uh, comparison, but I would say again that it is not something that is uncomfortable and I actually think it's the most fun handgun that I've ever fired. I own, I've owned handguns in 380 ACP, 9mm, and 45 ACP, and this is my favorite one to shoot. I'll end with the thought of, is this the right backpacking firearm option for you? And a lot of that just depends on how much coin do you have to spend on a handgun for backpacking. I think that if you're someone who maybe is interested in purchasing a handgun for home defense, you're not a gun owner, but you are interested in becoming one and you want to have a very capable home defense firearm and something that you can press into a role on the trail and that actually will be great on the trail and will be a firearm that you can carry really anywhere in North America and feel confident in. And you know that you're not going to go out shooting a lot, so you're not gonna be buying box after box after box of 10 millimeter. And maybe you have buddies who are firearm owners and you know they're talking about their 45 or their nine millimeter and you get to say, oh, oh my 10 millimeter, which is just an awesome caliber 
Uh, it's in a league of its own, definitely, in terms of most semi-automatic handgun cartridges. Then I think that this is an option that you should really look at. Now you have my thoughts on why I carry the Glock 20 on my backpacking adventures in North Georgia. I can say having carried it out several times now that it would be very hard for me to go back to carrying a smaller caliber firearm or much less to carry nothing at all. And there is something to be said for having those night sights glowing in the dark in the pocket holster of my Hill People kit bag when I'm getting ready to go to sleep. I am a solo hiker. There is very little chance that anyone would be able to help me quickly, certainly, if I got into some kind of trouble out there. So it's definitely a comfort uh, at night, all alone on the trail. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. I have a ton of ideas for content that I want to work on early this year, so stay tuned.